Hi. Today I want to tell you about a common problem that people have using the Kafka Connect JDBC connector, which is where they don't get the JDBC driver in the right place and all sorts of problems ensue. So let's walk through an example. I'm going to show you using Confluent Platform installed uh, locally, whether as a service or just um, from a tar, and also under Docker. So I'm going to use Oracle as my example database from which I'm going to pull in data. But this example here that I'm showing you, it applies to any database that supports a JDBC driver. And it also applies to a database that we're pulling data from or that we're pushing data to with Kafka. So here's Oracle and we've got a table. We can say, let's have a look at the data that's in the table. We've got ID and first name uh, from customers. And you can see we've got some data in the table. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get that data from Oracle into Kafka. So the table is called customers. So let's head over to Confluent Platform. And this is my local installation. I'm using Confluent CLI here just to manage it. You can run it as a service. You can run it using the components directly. How we're going to manage the JDBC drivers is exactly the same throughout. So Kafka Connect is up, as we can see here. It's running as a single node distributed worker under the covers. Um, and so we're going to try and create our connector. So let's paste this in and we've got our configuration here. So we're going to create a JDBC source connector here. We've got our um, JDBC URL here, connection details, and then table is customers. So let's create that and see what it says. And it says, oh, this is a bad request. So we've got an error back. And it says here, we've got no suitable driver found for this URL. And this is one of the most common problems that people have using the JDBC connector. If we go and have a look at um, Stack Overflow, if we have a look at the Confluence Community Slack channel, you'll see that loads and loads of people come up against this error. And the internet is a brilliant thing. The internet gives us loads and loads of resources for learning things, but sometimes it also sends us on merry little goose chases off in the wrong direction. So if you come across things talking about class paths, things about plugin paths and all this kind of stuff, a lot of that time, the advice is either just simply wrong or it's maybe out of date. So as of Apache Kafka 2.4 and I'm pretty sure 2.0 and certainly like within the last year or so and probably longer, the proper way to fix this is to make sure that you have the JDBC driver within the same folder as the Kafka Connect JDBC plugin. So I'm going to show you how to find that out and how to do it very simply. So we need the JDBC driver. The other reason we could get this error, apart from not having the JDBC driver, is actually if we've misspecified the URL. So we can see the URL here. This is the JDBC URL, and it's saying it's not found a suitable driver for this URL that we specified. So here's a valid URL for a JDBC connection to Oracle. So we're using a JDBC connection. It's to Oracle. It's using the thin driver. And here's where our Oracle database is. If I'd made a typo in this, if I put like Oracle without an A, or if I'd put a zero instead of an O, or if I typed it in wrong, I would get the same error. No suitable driver found for, because it couldn't work out how to uh, pass that URL, how to find a driver for that URL. But let's assume that our URL is correct. So we need to make sure we've got the driver available to Kafka Connect. Now, Kafka Connect JDBC Connector, it ships with the JDBC driver for both Postgres and SQLite. So if you're using those, then you're home free and it kind of, it just works. But any other database like MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, and so on, you need to get the JDBC driver and install it in the way I'm about to show you. So we're using Oracle. So let's go and get the Oracle JDBC driver. So for that, head to Oracle's website and you can get the thing here, you can click on it. It'll ask you to kind of sign terms and conditions and so on. Recently, Oracle changed their licensing or changed their distribution. I'm not sure specifically which. I'm not a lawyer, don't quote me. But you can now get the JDBC driver from Maven, which is kind of cool. So we go to Maven, we look for the driver. We can click on the jar file here and that'll download. So I'm going to download that into my downloads folder and off that goes. The cool thing about it being in Maven is that you can also automate this. You can just run a curl and pull that down directly. You don't have to kind of figure out how to go through a sign in process to download it. So we've got the JDBC driver. Let's uh, just check that it downloaded. So in my downloads folder here, we've got the, uh, the jar file there. So we've got OJDBC, OJDBC8, the jar file, and we've downloaded that. So now we need to put it in the folder for the Kafka Connect JDBC connector. Now, this is the bit that people often kind of get a bit confused at and understandably why, understandably so. There's lots of different folders involved, but it's actually pretty simple to find out. What we're going to do is we're going to run a find command. 
So I'm using the uh, Bash search history here, and we're simply going to say find the name is the Kafka Connect JDBC. We're using a wildcard because it might be different versions. And then I'm using Confluent Home. We're going to search within that. If you've not set that environment variable, if you're not quite sure where to look, but you can also just run it um, like this. And you could say slash, and that'll search like your entire machine. So let's uh, run that. So find Confluent Home. So it's going to start in Confluent Home. It's going to search throughout all of those folders, and it's going to find the Kafka Connect JDBC plugin. So it's found it here. There's the actual jar of the Kafka Connect JDBC plugin. Now, all we need to do is take this path here and we need to copy. So let's uh, say copy from downloads. Let's take our OG, OJDBC driver. .jar. Let's copy that into this path. That's all we need to do. So we copy it into there. That's where it needs to reside. Now, if I'd run this find command and it'd come back with multiple locations, then I would need to work out which JDBC uh, connector plugin is Kafka Connect currently using. And I'll show you that in a bit, but I want to kind of like just walk through this in a kind of like simple way to start with. So we found the JDBC plugin jar. It sits in this particular folder here. So this is the folder that we're going to copy that plugin into. And if we take that path and we say, let's list out the contents, we can see that within the plugin folder, we've got the plugin itself and we've got our JDBC driver. Now we just need to restart the Kafka Connect Worker. If we don't restart it, it won't pick the driver up and you'll kind of end up thinking that this thing doesn't work. It does work, but you've got to restart the worker. So because I'm using Confluence CLI, we can say Confluence local uh, stop connect and then Confluence local start connect. So it's going to bring down Kafka Connect and then it's going to bring it back up. So once that's restarted, we can then try resubmitting that um, the connector create command again and check that that works. So whilst that's going, I'm going to show you another trick that we can use. Let's make a bit more space up here. And what we can do is we can say, let's have a look at the connect process that's running. So we can say ps minus ef, uh, I want to grep for Java and grep within that for connect. Okay, so that's my Kafka Connect process with like a whole bunch of uh, paths and system arguments and stuff like that. If I now grep within that for log, okay, you can see here is where it's actually writing the logs. So we can go and have a look at the logs for the connector process, and we can use that to also work out which connector it's actually loading in. So let's do that briefly, and then we'll come back to actually loading the connector in and show it working. So I'm going to take that file and I'm going to change into that folder there. So here's my output from the Kafka Connect worker. Um, we're going to vi the connect.log. And we're going to say, let's have a look for the JDBC connector. So here we can see we've got the, the plugin JDBC sync connector, JDBC source connector. And then here we can see is where it loaded the plugin. So the plugin class loader, the, log the plugin location is here. So that's another way to find out where do I need to put my JDBC driver is actually go and look at the log files for the worker itself and the worker will say, here is where I loaded the connector from. Or you can just run a find and if you only find one result for the Kafka Connect JDBC plugin jar, you can just stick it in that folder. Both ways work, but when it comes down to it, your JDBC driver must go in the same folder or within the same folder structure as the Kafka Connect JDBC plugin. Okay, let's check this works. So we'll come out of that, we'll close that window there. Kafka Connect is now up. And so we're gonna paste in again our configuration and make sure that it works. And this time it says, okay, I've created that connector because it's been able to find the JDBC driver and it's been able to connect to the database, it's validated it, and hopefully now we've got data coming through. So I'm gonna head over to Confluent Control Center now. So Confluent Control Center, it's free to run if you've got a single broker. Um, so it's really useful for when you're just building stuff out in a sandbox. It's a commercial product if you're using it with like scaled out brokers. And what we can do is we can go and check that our connector is actually running. Okay, so it says it's running, which is nice. And we can go and have a look at the topics and we can see we've got one here for customers. And within that uh, topic, we've got messages. And we'll hopefully see in a moment when it, the screen loads up that it's got the messages uh, within the topic that match up what we've got the Oracle database. So if we head over to the Oracle database and remind ourselves the data that we've got in it, so we've got those there, 
we can rerun that and say we've got first name, we've got last name, stuff like that. And now head back to the control center and you can see here it's pulling in this data. It's duplicating the data because how I set up the, the uh, connector. The point of this is not as a tutorial on how to do how to actually run the connector. It's all about the GDBC driver. But if we remind ourselves about the connector itself, here we've said do a bulk load from the database. Here we've said do it every 10 seconds. So what you can see in the Kafka topic is the same data loading in every 10 seconds, which is not so useful. If you had a bulk load, you'd set the incremental thing, uh, the time, the polling timestamp to be a much greater interval. So that's how to do it where you've got Confluent Platform or Kafka Connect installed on your local uh, machine against bare metal. So you've downloaded the zip, the tar, the RPM, the Debian, and you've installed it on an actual machine. What about Docker? With Docker, it's a similar story. It's a similar concept. We've got to put the JDBC driver in the same folder as the plugin, but the way in which we do that differs. So let's have a look. So I'm going to shut down uh, Confluent Platform. So we're going to say uh, Confluent Local uh, destroy. So this is obviously going to blow away all of my data. It's just a sandbox instance, so I don't care about that. If you do care about it, don't run destroy, just run shutdown. And now I'm going to head over to where I've got um, some Docker images. So this is over in the, uh, the demo scene repository. If you're interested in using Docker, there's an awful lot of uh, demos built around Docker uh, within the demo scene repository. You can have a good poke around in there. The readme uh, lists all of them out. And within here, we've got one called Oracle and Kafka. And within here, we've got the uh, Docker Compose. So let's have a look at what that Docker Compose actually looks like. So it looks like this. We've got our Zookeeper and our Broker. We've got our Scheme Registry. And then we've got our Kafka Connect Worker. So our Kafka Connect Worker is built on the base Kafka Connect image. And what we do is when it starts up, we install the GDBC connector. So this is one of kind of two ways of actually using Docker images with Kafka Connect. One is you do everything at runtime. So you take the base image and then you overload at runtime, do this, do this, and then invoke the Kafka Connect worker process. The other way is that you actually build your own Docker file, building on top of this base image and you do your installations and stuff and then you commit that Docker file and then that becomes the image you use for your containers. Here I'm using the, uh, the runtime approach because it's kind of quicker than just rebuilding Docker files all the time. So here we're going to say we're going to install the plugin, so our Confluent Hub install, and then we do a download of the JDBC drivers, and here you can see we're pulling it in directly from Maven, and we're going to download it into the folder where our plugin resides. So you'll notice the path is a bit different. The path that we used in the uh, local installation wasn't the same. The point is the path has got to be where the plugin, the JDBC connector plugin resides. So we install the plugin, and then we change that local folder and then we download it into that local folder. And I guess we could have downloaded it directly, but the CD makes it nice and clear. And then the worker process gets invoked and started up. And then we do a sleep, because if we don't do a sleep, then that thread exits and the container dies. Let's see it in action. So here we go. So Docker compose up. So once that's starting up, it's important to point out the reason why we have to do it this way with overloading the runtime or building the images in advance is that you can't take a Docker image, spin it up as a container and then modify that container and restart the worker. Because when you restart the worker, the worker is the root process for that container. So if you want to restart the worker, you have to restart the container. And when you restart a Docker container, you lose any changes that you've made to it. So a common problem people have is they're using Docker for Kafka Connect. They realize they need to install an additional uh, JVC driver. So they like they shell into the Docker image, they copy the file in, they have to restart the worker and then they lose their change. Or they don't restart the worker and so the JDBC driver doesn't get picked up. So we've created this and we can say, let's uh, just check it's working. So we're going to use the, uh, the plugins uh, API just as a way of like saying to Kafka Connect, you're alive and running. So it isn't yet. OK, so it's not returned anything there. Okay, so now it has. So it showed us it's installed the uh, connector plugins, which is good. And we can say, let's have a look at what connectors you've got at the moment. Uh, search through my, uh, my history. That's not worked. So let's do this instead. Okay, a little bit of shell. So this simply says, go to uh, Kafka Connect and show me all of the connectors currently defined. And it says, well, there aren't any. 
So that means we can go and create our connector. So let's do our put. And what we're going to do here is we need to change our URL. In fact, I'll show you what happens if we don't. So at the moment, we're saying localhost. And this is going to fail. It's going to fail for a different reason. It's going to fail because it's saying uh, blah, 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 invalid value. The network adapter could not establish a connection for the configuration, couldn't open connection to here. So now we've said, well, the GDBC driver is there. I know how to talk to the database. Let's try and talk to Oracle. It says, well, I couldn't connect. Why can't it connect? It worked last time when we did that on a local install. When we did that on a local install, everything was running locally. Oracle was available locally on localhost. Kafka Connect was local and so on. On Docker, we've got all these different containers with all the different little host names and their own little private network. And so we've said to Kafka Connect in its own little container, go and find Oracle and Oracle is on localhost. And Kafka Connect says, well, okay, I'll ping localhost and try and connect to Oracle. But localhost for Kafka Connect container is just the Kafka Connect container. There's no Oracle there. So it's saying, well, there is no Oracle. I can't connect. So instead, we need to fix our URL and we're going to point to our Oracle Docker container. So this time it connects to the database and we'll see in a moment that it's going to pull data through. So I'm going to use Kafka, uh, sorry, Kafka Cat. So Kafka Cat, Kafka Cat, there we go. And to start with, I'm just going to list out the metadata that's on the, on the broker. And it says, well, here's the metadata for topics that match customers. We've got the Oracle customers topic. And I can consume from that, Kafka Cat. And here we're going to consume. So here's our topic, Oracle customers. It's in Avro, so we're going to deserialize that. And we've got our data. And if I wait, and if I talk for another 10 seconds, you'll see in a moment we get a bunch more through. Because if you remember, the connector is pulling every 10 seconds to the database and pulling in a full copy of the table. So there was that poll again. And it'll keep on doing that until I actually kill the connector. With Kafka Cat, you may have noticed I'm connecting on localhost and I'm using Kafka Cat on my local machine. So this is where I'm getting a little bit funky. That's not the purpose of this tutorial to talk about Docker and networking. But if you're interested, I've exposed my broker and Docker. I've exposed two advertised listeners. One of them is on the, the broker for the internal Docker network. One of them is out to localhost, which is my host machine. So I can connect to the Kafka on my Docker container using this localhost address. I've exposed my schema registry port also available locally. Um, you can also run Kafka Cat under Docker, which is, and then you can just do it all within that as well. So that's how you can use Kafka Connect with the JDBC connector to connect to databases, both for pulling data in or for pushing data out, and how you correctly install the JDBC driver. You put it in the same folder as the Kafka Connect JDBC plugin. Nothing else, nothing more. Well, one thing more, make sure you bounce the Kafka Connect worker afterwards.